Gang initiation. So, this happened quite a few years ago. I am from Australia and lived in a town of about 500,000 people. I currently live in Sydney and there are so many stories I could share, but this one came to mind when I saw this thread. We lived on the south side of this town and were visiting my grandmother and extended family who were down for the weekend from Sydney. They lived about 20 minutes away. Everything is very suburban and quite close to each other, and we often stayed at my grandmother's very late when my family came down, just watching movies and having dinner together. My dad was abusive and didn't like my mother's side of the family, so we always went without him. My mom had her license and would drive us home. We ended up leaving at around 12.30 to 1 a.m. and were in a van together. My three sisters, who were 7, 18, and 3, and my autistic brother, we were about five minutes away from our house when we see a man standing on the road with his arms outstretched in front of him, signaling for us to stop. My mom slowed the car down, not wanting to hit him, and when she did, at least five other guys came out from the bushes on the side of the road, all carrying some kind of weapon by this time. The car is stationary, and we were all in shock. They surrounded the car, and nobody says a word. They didn't swear at us, weren't drunk, weren't yelling obscenities or being racist. Our background is Pakistani, they were just standing around the car staring. This was so scary, because they were all wearing bandanas around their mouths, and were wearing hoodies as well. There were children in the car, and an autistic person, but they looked like they wanted to do some serious damage to all of us. I kind of remember my brother not understanding, and wanting to roll down the window, but I think I was too scared to explain why he shouldn't. He didn't, anyways. The guy who stopped our car was egging another guy who was at the front of the car to hit us. Hit the fucking car. Hit the bitch. And the guy is like trying to pump himself up and swing the bat or whatever it was he was holding at us. He's about to swing. And I get the feeling that the other guys surrounding the car are just waiting for him to make the first move. Just as he's about to hit the car, my older sister snaps out of whatever shock we are all in and screams, Mom, drive. And my mom just floors it. The two dudes pretty much have to dive out of the way to avoid being hit. We were at the top of a hill and we're about to drive down and they start to chase after our car on foot for some stupid reason and a few guys throw things at our back window when i was younger i thought it was stupid idiots just trying to fuck up someone's nights but i feel like it was gang related after i thought about how they reacted like when they were waiting for the guy to swing at the car first and the way that they were all the way that they were all kind of dressed you know this all happened pretty fast but it felt like forever to be honest Afterwards, we got home and my mom calls the police, but needless to say, nothing much came out of it. They searched the area and that was it. Almost robbed by Nortino gang members in California. This happened in around 2008 to 2009. It seems fitting for this subreddit, though it wasn't exactly creepy per se. I was at a late night beach fire in San Francisco, thrown by a group of predominantly white college students. Upon arrival, I noticed there was a lot of Hispanic Nortino gang members who I'd never seen before. After, one gets right up into my face and asks who I was. It was dark and I was dressed more menacingly than most of the other kids there. Less than five minutes I got there, my neighbor, who was on top of a hill, was robbed at gunpoint, and then beaten to the ground. And with that, the other Latinos just started attacking students, beating them down, two, sometimes three or more to a single victim, pounding them into submission, and taking their possessions. My roommate's friend actually got tackled off the aforementioned hill, and then beaten by two guys right next to us. My roommate didn't even bother trying to save his homeboy, so he just left him to be robbed. I escaped unaccosted because I was brandishing my knife and nobody wanted to see my motherfucking ass, but it was still frightening, and I was stopped by police as a witness on my way out of there. Lurking Gangsters in the Woods This happened when I was about 12 years old. My friends and I used to ride our bikes all over Hell's Half Acre, and we lived in a neighborhood bordering East Cleveland that got a lot of spillover crime from the ghetto, most of which were high school-age kids and gangs committing senseless crimes. 
lots of murders, lots of robberies. I even had one friend whose mother was in the wrong place at the wrong time and was killed by a stray bullet by a drive-by shooting. I guess our town wasn't the best neighborhood, but it wasn't the worst either. So, I saved up my money from birthdays and holidays and saved enough to buy a new mountain bike and it was pretty badass, although I believe it was only like 200 bucks. But it was the first thing that I ever saved my money for and bought for myself. Naturally, I wanted to take it in the woods to rip some trails, but being in an urban environment, all we had nearby were some small patches of woods. A few years prior to this, I, um, I, I, I ran away from home and got lost for like four hours before stopping at a gas station and calling my dad, who was the reason I ran away from home in the first place, to come and pick me up. The reason I got lost is because I turned off the road behind the local post office and went through a pretty big wood lot, the biggest I had seen in the area, and when I came out of it, I was not anywhere I'd recognized. So anyways, I called up my friend, who also had a mountain bike, and I told him about the wood lot that, you know, I remembered from before. We decided to go rip the trails. Uh, when we arrived at the post office, the scene was pretty much the same, except they had fenced off probably an 8-foot fence and with barbed wires as well, not the looping razor wire that's impossible to climb that you see in prisons and military compounds, but more like, you know, simple. Luckily, there was a small cut in the fence that we could sneak through with the bikes without having to challenge the barbed wire, although our urban exploration had brought us over many barbed wire fences, so we were accustomed to getting over them and skate but never with bikes with us. This was our first time actually having bikes with us and having to do something like this. So we sneaked into the woods lot and get on our bikes and head down the trail as usual, which was a downhill decline as we started to pick up speed. We were not even 50 yards into the lot. When we saw ahead of us, probably another 50 feet ahead of us, a group of eight to 10 older black kids, all tatted up and not dressed like they were there for a camping trip baggy clothes, jeans in the summertime, do-rags, etc, etc, etc. We're just standing around there with a fire and smoking cigs or weed or something like that. I mean, I wasn't close enough to tell. Irrelevant. Anyways, we stopped and looked at them for what seemed like only a few seconds, and they seemed to notice us immediately. At first, they started yelling to us to come over to them. At that moment, neither of us moved. We were both good kids with good families, and we knew that this was not a situation that we wanted to be in. They began getting more and more aggressive as we didn't respond to them, and the hey, come over here turned into, I said get the fuck over here. At this point, my friend and I look at one another, knowing they wanted to steal our bikes and probably beat us up, kick our asses, hoping one of us had some kind of escape plan and when we looked back to see what they were doing, we saw two of them running at us. We flipped our bikes around and took off back towards the fence. We were pedaling uphill, so we were going slower than we would have if we were on foot. I was in front, and I jumped off my bike and ran with my bike in tow beside me, and my friend followed suit and did the same. We were covering ground faster on foot, since we were going uphill and couldn't gain any momentum on the bikes. We get to the top of the hill, and we're greeted by the barbed wire fence. Fuck! Now, I'm a pretty strong 12-year-old kid. I was very athletic and had natural strength from growing up as a wrestler. We wasted no time looking for an opening because it was well hidden and a pain in the ass to get through. So, I just grabbed my bike and threw it over the fence. My brand new bike. Then I grabbed my friend's bike and did the goddamn exact same. We scaled the barbed wire and jumped down from the top and into the parking lot where our bikes lay in a strew. We hurriedly picked them up. Scaling the barbed wire had brought us some time because the two guys behind us were holding the fence open for each other and one guy got his shirt snagged. We took off as fast as we could and now we were on smooth pavement and a flat landscape. There's no way we're getting caught by someone on foot. We sped off a mile or so down the road at the gas station, scared shitless and gasping for breath. We looked back and saw nobody. We had escaped! Or so... Or so we thought. As we sat there in the parking lot of the gas station, recapping what in the world had just taken place. We were getting ready to ride away when our worst nightmare unfolded. An old body style Grand Marquis pulled up, and in it were four of the eight or ten guys. I'm not certain where the others were, 
but two of them were unmistakably the guys chasing us in the woods, and the others were probably down in the woods, but I didn't recognize them. My relief of escape turned to terror as a car pulled in and one of the guys jumped out. Hey, motherfuckers! We didn't wait around to hear the rest. We hit skates and were cutting away on our bikes before they could even respond, pedaling as fast as our legs would take us. They got in the car and followed us through the neighborhood. As we cut through backyards, threw our bikes over fences, cut across streets, and ran for our lives. We eventually found our way into the backyard of someone a couple blocks from my house that lived on a corner and had a large wooden privacy fence, which we hid behind. We could still see through the small cracks between the wooden planks and had a view of the street from two different angles. We saw the car pass twice, then nothing, but we didn't want to risk coming out quite yet. What if they were waiting up the street? What if they were waiting down the street? We didn't know what to do. Then the luckiest thing ever happened. The like the guy whose yard we were hiding in called the police. We saw the flashing lights through the fence posts and panicked. We thought we were going to be arrested, to be honest, but that's not really what happened. The cops weren't concerned with what they were doing as much as they were concerned about who we were hiding from. We recapped the whole situation, the whole story to them, and they even gave us rides to our house. It was over. The cops never did find who those guys were, what they wanted. I can only imagine that they wanted our bikes, or they wanted just to beat us up for fun, I guess. Or maybe both. I moved out of that area about three years later, and my friend I was with stayed. He is currently serving jail time for gang-related crime. It's been 14 years. And 14 years later, as a 26-year-old man, I'm 6 foot, 225 pounds, but I still have frequent nightmares at least once a month anyways for i am on foot or on a bike running through my old neighborhood while being chased by gangsters who want to kill me this is probably the most terrifying experience of my life